Also known as the Black Tony Stark. <laughs> I'm a video creator, social media specialist, I suppose I could say. Yeah, I am also a travel enthusiast, filmmaker. I love capturing and creating, or rather, portraying my perspective of different things that I see out there in Africa from my perspective. Um, I'm very passionate about that. Black Tony Stark is actually a superhero. So if people know Marvel, they know Iron Man. And I felt I, I felt like I had a lot of similarities with Iron Man, like in terms of personality and like, you know, other relationships as well and a lot of other things. And I just felt like it was really cool. So I was like, yo, let's slap that on, be the black Iron Man. But it sounds a lot cooler being the black Tony Stark rather than the Black Iron Man, so, yeah. So far, because it's also the most, um, it's the most, it's the place I captured the most, I would say Malawi, because actually I made a whole documentary on Malawi and all that, and I really got in depth with like everything that I saw and the things I did. And also, it, was, it also came at a point where I was more, confident in my abilities like video abilities and I had better technical knowledge so definitely Malawi like the people the cultures and all that kind of stuff a close second would be Vietnam because that was at the beginning of my video journey so there were also a lot of things I learned through that Vietnam thing like technical things and like cultural things that have shaped me into becoming the creator that I am so I'll say Malawi first and then a close second Vietnam Malawi, again, because of what I was able to capture. Togo as well, because of what I was able to capture, that trip. And then, oh, it's a tough one between Tanzania and Kenya. Um, I'm gonna say Tanzania, but yeah, that's my top three right now. Mm. So, in the beginning, when I had, when I was less experienced, it was definitely like a, hey, when I get there, I'll figure out what to shoot. But now I plan a lot more. So like with Togo and all that stuff, I already had an itinerary. I already knew what we were going to do. So I kind of research um, the different aspects of that. So there's the footage that you're probably talking about is the, at the, the plantation, the oil, palm oil plantation. So we knew there were going to be these um, traditional dances. So what I did is I researched like where the dancers are from, what they do and all that. And then I tried to bring all that information out and give my perspective on it through the footage. So the way I captured it is not the same way that someone else would capture it. So it's always about how can I make it look like the Black Tony Stark is doing it and not just another, for example, I'm going to Tanzania just now and we're going to be capturing the Maasai um, dancers and all that so I've seen a lot of videos where it's captured a certain way and I'm like no I need to bring my spin to it make it interesting in my way and I also look for unique things like on the internet what are unique facts about certain things and I try to bring out those things rather than rehashing the same things we've seen over and over again which I feel helps me stand out because now it's not when someone sees Maasai video and it's a Maasai video, it's like, oh, we know what to expect. But now if it's a Maasai video by Black Tony Stark, like, oh, how did he do it? You know, that kind of, yeah. So that's always a thought process. How can I make it my own? Mm. So that Malawi video, when I, what I had planned to do is I wanted to be, okay, so I'd been seeing vlogs, a lot of vlogs, like vlogs are very popular these days, right? And I feel like they're, it's a lot of bubblegum kind of content and whatever, but 
because that's the new media way to go and not the traditional way. Well, the new media way is more popular than the traditional way. I was like, okay, so I need to incorporate those new media aspects and the traditional media aspect. So when someone's watching this on YouTube, I want them to feel like they're watching a vlog, but the same vlog could also be on Netflix. So I chose to shoot everything flat and then I wanted to use those like really african looking colors you know like create that kind of feel to it so it doesn't just feel like a regular vlog so the idea was like okay this if you saw it you'd be like am i watching netflix or am i watching youtube so that's why yeah that's why i chose that kind of grading with all of that like trying to give it like a movie feel yeah <laughs> So in terms of like the grading and the music, so I feel like when I, in my younger days when I used to watch um, video content, someone would come to Africa and they'd be at a, a waterfall or something and then they're playing EDM music. So I'm like, okay, I see where the waterfall is, but now there's a disconnect with the music. I mean, it looks cool, but there isn't that deeper connection that you get with the actual place. So I feel like a lot of times creators are choosing music that they like rather than music that fits the scenario, same as with the grading. So I'm always trying to put the grading to accentuate like the feel that I want people to get out and I make sure I choose the kind of music to give you the feeling that I want you to feel when you're there so to be very specific like if it's a waterfall it'd be like slow flowy music like you know those kind of beats if it's like traditional dances it's got to be like traditional African music that kind of fits their culture as well so I'm very intentional with like the music and the grading to make like properly immerse the person in the content that they're watching yeah So I've been very fortunate to be able to have them both at the same time. So, excuse me, I have, I have some clients that only require a certain amount of days from me and then I have them on a retainer. So then I know that the rest of the week I can do whatever I want to do. So the retainer clients cover the bills and then going out to travel I treat like as an investment. So in the beginning I used to pay for all my travels myself go out, explore things and capture things. Now it's gotten to a point where people are seeing that old work and now they're hiring me to travel. So now the money that I make in my nine to five, I don't have to spend on traveling. Now I'm being paid to travel so I can save that money. So it's kind of like a nice um, buffer for me to carry on traveling and carry on exploring and getting all the experience and all everything out as much as I can before, till I get to a point where I can be like, okay, cool, I don't have to work anymore or whatever. So yeah, that's, that's how the balance comes in. A lot of the work is actual travel work, yeah. It goes both ways. For me, creating the content is my enjoyment. I enjoy creating that content. Now also because people think that because you're capturing the content in certain scenarios and things that you're not enjoying the moment or you're not in the moment or whatever but for me i feel more immersed in moments when i'm capturing it because i'm now because i'm documenting it i'm looking for details that other people don't notice so i see a lot more than someone else who for example the the nyao dancers in malawi everyone else they're sitting there they're sitting back and they're watching the show so there's a lot of things happening and they just this is what they're giving us so this is what we're watching but now as i'm capturing it there i'm noticing so many other things behind the scenes like oh that's how that guy prepares for his dance after he's done with the dance he does this oh the women behind the guys they do this and they change the outfits like this so i see a lot more than a regular person would see and i enjoy that because now i feel like i'm getting more out of the experience plus Afterwards, I've got something I can play back and be like, oh, remember that day? This is exactly how it happened. This is someone else who just has their eyes and they've just, yeah, this is what I saw. That's it. We're done for the day and we're out of here. So for me, all of it is enjoyment. Even when I'm working and doing all that stuff, as tiring as it is, when I get back to the editing and all that stuff, I still, I, that for me is the enjoyment. The creation is the enjoyment for me. Now it's a lot. So I have, I have an FPV drone now. 
it's just it's it's really just for fun really it's more for social media because you know the way social media now is you can't as an artist back in the days you could just share what you love and this is how you see things now for your things to do well on social media you've got to be like wow catch people's attention so for me the fpv drone is really that kind of stuff like someone sees a cool fpv shot and like oh let's pay attention and then you can sell your message afterwards so fpv drone regular um Oh, DJI FPV drone, Mavic Air 2, uh, Sony A6600, Sony A6400, a tripod. <laughs> um, what else do I have in my bag? Yeah. Oh, Gorillapod, an Osmo, DJI Osmo Action, and yeah, I think that's it. Yo, to a certain point, yes. If you have enough technical knowledge, then I'll say no, gear is not everything. As a newbie, I'd say gear is more important, definitely. Because if you have enough technical knowledge, you could make any, if you can tell a story, it doesn't matter what tool you're using you know but if you're a newbie creator and you don't really know what you're doing at least if your content looks good then you're at least halfway there you know so yeah half and half i'd say don't follow the trends because it'll be here today gone tomorrow and now you're going to be stuck because you are following that other trend that someone else is doing and now you can't keep up when the new trend comes up and now you're stuck not knowing who you are or what you're doing so i feel like you should stay in your lane or create your own lane like i've tried to do and do what you do to the best of your ability if you're going to try and copy other people or do things that you see being done out there it's not going to serve you well because then if a, for example a client wants a videographer there's going to be a hundred thousand different videographers that can do the exact same thing. So why would they choose you? So with you creating your own lane, you might not get all the work in the beginning, but when someone wants something specific, they'll be pay willing to pay your rates, first of all. And you'll also have the creativity and the freedom to do what you do because they're hiring you for what you can do, not what anyone else could replicate. So I feel like, yeah, just stay true to who you are and yeah, stay and create your own lane. <laughs> yeah. Cool.